I have a holy candle. Hold on. You know, I'll hold up my candle. I will light the candle. We begin today's talk with a prayer. Hi, welcome to the Sifu Mimi Chan Show. Thanks for joining the conversation. It's another episode of the Mimi and Greg Show. It's been a while since we've had a true Rucka rant. Well, prepare yourself, everyone. Rucka goes all in during this episode. We start off nice and light with the WGA and SAG after strike. We talk about corporate greed, jump into whataboutism culture, and the problem with performative social media posts. Despite our serious tone, it's always a fun time speaking with Greg. I'm so grateful for our friendship and look forward to our live version of the podcast at Rose City Comic Con in September. Stop by and say hello. We'd love to see you there. For those that don't already know, Greg Rucka is a New York Times bestselling author of hundreds of comics and nearly two dozen novels. He is also the writer for his critically acclaimed and award-winning film, The Old Guard, starring Charlize Theron. I'm loving these conversations and hope you are too. If you are, please rate my podcast on your platform of choice and share it with others. If you would like to support with a donation to help keep this podcast going and support the work I do, you can become a patron of the show by visiting my website or patreon.com slash Sifu Mimi Chan. For comments or suggestions, reach out on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan. Now on with the show. Please, internet, be nice to me for the next hour. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> we begin today's talk with yes. a prayer. Yes. <laughs> Here, internet I, I, gods and... Yes, uh, hold on. Hold on, wait. I I have a holy candle. Hold on. You know, I will hold up my candle. I will light the candle. Oh wow. We're getting like a light whole the candle. Like, ceremony. Yeah, here we go. This is this is for the YouTube crowd. Yeah. <laughs> and the listeners are going, Well, they've really what are they? it. That's yeah, they're going, that's great, guys. It's a visual hello, medium. Hello, Greg. They're like, hello, 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 like me, last me. time the hello hello was like 20 minutes in. So us like two did, minutes. Did we in get criticism? Did we get oh criticism? Oh my god, we got love. <laughs> for not hello helloing in time. No, for, for going while wow, you guys just dove right in literally yeah. to the deep sea. Like it was <laughs> like so I started it off because I'm sure you didn't get a chance to hear, but it was like <laughs> before anything was just you going, hold on, ten thousand feet. I'm almost there. And then it was, hi, welcome to the <laughs> <Chan Show." laughs> And then it was the intro. And then it just like has us talking. And I'll let you know on air because you know he's gonna listen to this because he's my teenage mm-hmm. high schooler that helps edit he goes yeah i totally went does on he, the does DC he have a name and i scroll down jake yes hi jake thank hi, you jake. Yeah. and go. he's like i couldn't help it i scrolled down all the it's, way to the end it is it again we're talking about this thing from almost a month ago now it is an extraordinary experience going through that thing it is it is <laughs> I, I i found it profound profoundly anxiety inducing yes, yes. You know? well he couldn't jay couldn't help himself and i asked i go you scrolled down didn't you he's like yes i did it's, but, it's, you know- it's, it's super cool <laughs> yeah. it's super cool but yeah, it was just it like was you're just waiting it, it's 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 like it's like you're waiting for the cat scare moment in the horror film or something right. you know it's like if i <laughs> Eventually, I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to see something I really don't want to see. Right, right. Um, so, but I thought you would find that funny. And, <laughs> and you know, speaking of like off air things and edit things, whenever I go, oh, Greg Ruck is on again. He goes, uh oh, because he knows he, the, Ruck, the Ruck of rants. He, he's like, yes, right. it's great because when I originally had him intern for me, I talked to his parents. I'm like, so my podcast can be a little bit like in your face. We get a little political. There's some cursing a little, and they're like, a little all bit. good. They're like all good. This is the stuff we 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 want to encourage for him to hear like different Excellent. views, and we think it's fantastic. I've heard your podcast; you're great, but you have quite the reputation with the Rucker Rants, well, and he and, loves and, it. He it's like he looks forward to them. <laughs> I, I, you know, I listen to you when you're not talking to me, right? <laughs> like when 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 you've got me on, I don't listen to those. Right, right, of course, right? because you were the, there. <laughs> yeah, well, and also it's 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 a level of mental masturbation that like I just. <laughs> But I do love that it seems that over our years talking together, I have brought out the worst in you. (laughs) Like you are such, you are so well-spoken and you're so considerate and your questions are always so lovely. And you, you, and you, you listen so actively 
And then I get on and I feel like I'm just sort of like knocking shit off of your desk and be like, all right, Mimi, what are we talking about today? Let me tell you what's pissing me off. Boy, howdy. Let's talk about universal cutting those trees, huh? I'll tell you. <laughs> I so. wish right now I had something queued up for you that I'm going to send you off air. But I interviewed my friend on Spider-Man uh, across the Spider-Verse because he is all things Spider-Man. I think I told you about this, that we were going to talk. And uh -huh. the first five minutes was off air. So it's not an on-air convo, but... He basically talked about his love for our conversations and, <laughs> and he and he starts off with, you know, Greg and you. Well, sorry, I shouldn't say Greg, Mr. Rucka. I was like, oh, <laughs> he'll love that. Oh, like, he's like, you know, no, no, he's Greg. you guys converse and, you know, yeah. he was just like going on. He goes, oh, my God, at this point, it's just it's it's hilarious. It, it, so I'm going to I'm going to send you the off air. Clip this is I thought you'd appreciate it. I wish I had it queued up right now. If I had so a sound this, engineer, <laughs> this is the. um. This is the moment where we want to tell everybody that we're going to do this live at Rose City, I think. <laughs> um, that, that, yep. that, 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 Unintentional that, plug. <laughs> well, no, Mimi texted me last week, week before. Uh, I, was in, in LA, I was in L.A. on so, Friday. Yeah. yeah. And it LA. was, we need to come up, what are we going to do for the panel? And, yes, yes. and it was kind like, of reached out and said, we need a description of your panel. I was like, yeah. oh, okay, I'll get right okay. back to you. <laughs> we'll do it live. So, yeah. So uh, with audience participation, I'm really open. Uh, I mean, come on, we can. It, it's going to be here. That's uh, right. We can get Nicola. <laughs> I'm sure we can get Nicola in on it. I would well, love, got, I would love to get Troutman up there. Yeah. yeah. Um, Mike is very laid back. Henderson's yeah. very laid back in sort of his presentation. Right. Eric really keeps himself in check. But yeah. like, if you can get him to take the governor off, he's going to make me look like a Quaker. <laughs> like I'm going to look like the most placid, you know. Oh my gosh. I don't know if the room's going to be able to handle all this. But <laughs> yeah. You kind of know a few people in Portland, I'd say. So yeah, we will have some surprise guests, some people popping in. Uh, we will also be doing a live Mimi and Greg show conversation. Right. And uh, at least one Rucka rant. Yeah. At yeah. least one Rucka rant. I mean, it's so, it's so sought after now. <laughs> one now that, one that guaranteed. One and, guaranteed. Um, yes. Yes. And I, know, I know the key words to mention just to get you going, you exactly. know, Social media. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So, and who knows by then my, what's going to be happening with all the unions. So, the, my dirty, well, okay, we, we've got two things to talk about, uh, <laughs> at least. So, my dirty secret is I'm back on social media. I got a blue sky invitation from Alejandro Arbona, our like editor on all things yes. image. And I was like, all right, I'll try it. So, I actually am there. Okay. Um, and so far, I, I I seem to be navigating okay, but it's okay. interesting okay. going back onto a social media platform mm -hmm. after having been away for almost a decade, really, <laughs> like for quite a while now. Yes, yes. That um, it, it is amazing to me, I, a decade over, say, probably certainly certainly five or six years it's amazing how um all those neural pathways just get reactive like the dopamine hit bullshit yeah, it is comes not back right away it is 100%. not good no and, and no. being aware of how quickly it's like okay there's something going on like and we know this that they've done the studies but yeah but to be that aware of it in yourself like to feel it mm. going like oh i can i can feel like the urge to fall back into these habits and and the the addictive need mm -hmm. and i say that as somebody who has a variety of addictions from from nicotine to co to caffeine to and and I think I have an a, addictive personality. Like I get, there are certain things I do and have to actively break those patterns if I'm like in the home environment. Um, and that may also be, I don't know, that may also be a product of aging. I need to do some more reading on it. Like at 53, it may simply be that 
the elasticity, you know, in my brain to change these patterns of behavior, it becomes more difficult. Mm. All that being said, yes, I'm on Blue Sky. Okay. The platforms for all of its troubles, because it is a social media platform. Um, it's been pleasant enough. So, yeah. Okay. I'm not so, familiar. Uh, we will, we will see how it goes. Um, but I sure I'm as hell ain't touching threads. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> I ain't, did. Ain't going, I, I, it's so, it was so easy to just go yes, activate and, and, and it, it was like can't. all connected and I'm like, Oh, okay. And, and now you can't ever get off of it. Yeah. Right. Like to stop it, you have to delete like your Instagram account. And apparently <laughs> some of the stuff I've read. Oh, now you're you know, scared. Oh, me. <laughs> no, no. It, it, it is problematic because yes. uh, my understanding is the, like it's it's connecting you with, you know, people who are following you. Well, if people mm-hmm. who have you in their address books have given that access to Facebook mm. because I can't bring myself to call them meta. Yeah, I know um, too. I mean, I, and actually, given the failure of the metaverse, one wonders how long until they change their name back. But um, it, it, apparently, there's an issue of syncing that data. So, you know, people who have very legitimate reasons to be, say, concealing their identities from mm-hmm. their abusers or whatnot, that right. information is now suddenly associated with them yeah. again. Mm. And it, yeah, it's it's messed up. You know, I mean, I and I'm sure you've seen it in like, you know, I think there was an article yesterday in the Guardian about you know AI erosion, uh, you know, democracy, um, and the dangers for the next election. We've you know the New York Times earlier this week literally had a <laughs> had a front page argument, uh, uh, article about. This is how Trump's going to reform the federal government if he's elected. And the headline should have been, this is how Trump intends to impose a fascist dictatorship. I mean, that's literally what it was. But the New York Times being the, you know, I, I don't even know, being the cowards, being the, <laughs> the, the, the the corporate masters that they seem desperate to serve. You know, God forbid anybody come out and and say, hey, you know what? The sun is hot. This guy's a liar. Like, we know it. It's proven. Mm -hmm. You know, so um, you want to talk about the strike? (laughs) I mean, since we're on such a happy subject, let's just keep rolling. I'll tell you. So uh, (laughs) if people haven't seen the memes that were dropping last week of like, there's that. Uh, that that one from Thirty Rock, you know, that was like WGA uh, mm-hmm. SAG AFTRA. I was down. I went down last week um, because I wanted to to get on the picket line. It mattered yeah. to me, right? And and I I had friends that I hadn't seen since before the pandemic, and oh. dear dear friends. You know, and I was like, I'll sleep. I can sleep on their couch. I'll get to see them. I'll go out. I'll do the morning shift on the picket lines. Then went out on Monday, right? And Monday, it's seven days in WGA. Writers are, are, are out there. Writer support network is great. Like the strike captains and the strike support people. God bless them. Right. Mm. But you know, there's a lot of fatigue. Like you can see it's 70 days in and it's hot and there isn't shade and you're out in front of Warner brothers or I was, and I was predominantly at one gate, you know, that was where I stuck. And, you know, as the day progresses, more and more people show up and they spread out to pick it. And then Tuesday, there are more and more people but it's still you hit a sort of upper limit. Mm-hmm. Friday was the first day that SAG AFTRA was there. And I mean, it was it was literally like you, you know the best what it's it's is it Helm's Deep in 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 the in in the two towers? Is it the Battle of Helm's Deep? Oh, um, that's where where the elves appear on the hill, right? And, they, and like they are the ah oh, the golden the ones or time. whatever. I'm thinking like, the reinforcements come in exactly. And it was sort of that feeling, 
And the other thing is, you know, the, and this is not to make it seem like all the writers are old. They're not. Right. There are right. plenty right. of young writers out there. I mean, lots. Uh, I mean, I, there was, a, a, I think, a Howard University alum day oh, that cool. was just so cool to see. Like all these all, all these African American writers, like with their Howard shirts, yeah, coming out, and that was really cool. A lot of young writers, but then you get out there on Friday, and it's just like, you know, the WGA, you're out there, and you're you got your sign, you're picketing, and you're trying to get people. They're all walking around, you know. SAG after is like live streaming right their phones and being like, I'm outside of Warner Brothers, and the MTPT, you know, needs to listen to it, and just. And it's like, God bless you all. <laughs> God bless you all. So, oh, my God. I love that 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 image. The elves, they show up because yeah, they, yeah, it just, it's like it, heavenly. It, yeah. And, and, <laughs> and they're all not, like fresh and not tired. And they're like polished. And, 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 and like the elves, they look beautiful. Yes, just look you know? amazing. <laughs> exactly. Like done up and like ready to go. Yeah. Reinforcements you know, most, arrived. I know. Most, I was like, oh, my gosh. It's happening most, while Greg's there. <laughs> Most of the writers who, you know, the, yeah, I haven't been out there as long as there have been people who've been doing this every day. And yeah, yeah. and and um, and I don't think I mean, and it's not as if the writers don't care how they look. Right. <laughs> But you know, they don't you care get as much. <laughs> yeah, but you get Saga after out there, and it's like, look at them being beautiful. And it's like, yeah, all right, good, all right, this is good. But that energy, yeah, and that sense of solidarity, and then you know, WGA was out um, for the Teamsters rally in LA on Wednesday this week. Um. You know, I woke up what yesterday I ought to see on Broadway announced mm -hmm. um, a potential strike today. Um, there's this thing about, an, you know, the animation, the animators oh, okay. unionizing. Um, I mean, this is. Yeah, it's a big movement. <laughs> this is this is a, this is a moment. And. I don't know what will come of the moment, but it's a needed moment. And yeah. I want to have faith that, you know, we're, 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 we're not going to in my, in my lifetime, you know, and somewhere in a far, far James, you know, uh, sorry, Gene Roddenberry, Star Trek utopian future. Yeah. We're going to get all this shit sorted out. Hmm we're you know, i'm not going to live to see that i know that <laughs> but i i think there are very important victories still to be attained and they are attainable yeah and i mean my you know i mean these you know Iger's comments and zaslav and these guys it's like they haven't met a rake that they didn't want to step on and it's, I think I was talking to um, a, a WGA board member um, when I was picketing and, and we were talking about the fact that so much of this mythology in American capitalism is there's this meritocracy and that, you know, the people who are these CEOs and are getting these hundred million dollar you know, paychecks and then bonuses on top of it are getting them because uh, they earn them, right? They, they have, uh, they're so good at their job. Their skills are so great, right? Right. And one of the things that I think is now starting to seep into the collective in a way that had been certainly in, in mainstream media sort of actively, um, if not fought against, at least uh, tacitly embraced, and, and is that the, the, these are not exceptional men. These are mediocre men. These are staggeringly untalented men. And I think, oddly, perhaps that ties in with all the stuff that's coming out about the corruption in the Supreme Court, and it is corruption. Mm-hmm. Um, 
and it's not going to be an overnight moment. What it's going to be is, you know, you keep, you keep putting water into the glass drop by drop and eventually you're going to fill the glass and then eventually it's going to start spilling out. You're going to break, you're going to break the surface tension. You're going to add one drop too many and it's going to go swoosh. And I think we are getting very close to the meniscus breaking here. I think the surface tension <laughs> is about to go. Yeah. Um, yeah. It is not insignificant that all of these things are happening now. Um, and there's going to have to be a resolution. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're going to, this is going to be long. We're not, we're not even at the halfway point on this. I'm sure we're not. Wow. Okay. I'm sure we're not. Um, so, yeah, you know, um, if if you are if if people are so inclined, they should you know that if they can throw a buck or two at the entertainment uh, relief fund, that would be a good thing. I'm yeah. trying to yeah, get. Um, I, I, I've got to reach out to to Leo and to Michael about doing a shirt we can do on bonfire and oh, okay, yeah. proceeds. You know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, we got to come up with something. So. Yeah, it it was kind of I th- actually I think I spoke to you on Friday um because I was like, well, we're all in it now because yeah, you it just you. Yeah. happened and yeah. and we we finally connected. I'm like, oh my gosh, you must be so tired and and yeah, I, I mean, it's, it yes. was a good time to be <laughs> <laughs> it was a good time to be there though to have like that contrast of the yeah. of, of the coming in and then just being able to go, okay, there's reinforcements here too. And then like you just yeah. even flying out to go do that is, is awesome. Like we're here in Orlando. There was like one event on Monday, which was like a photo op out at the Disney gates, but um, not to make excuses and way too much information for our audience, but I was doing colonoscopy prep. So I was not leaving the house that day. Wait, <laughs> and wait, I was like, there's not only a one time, thing. not a time when you can really go out and, and right. It. Right. Yeah. And so I was like, Oh, there's only one thing. And so I'm sure they'll have, Oh, there'll else. be it's more like Miami. So yeah. we'll keep an eye out, but yeah, it's just been kind of jarring to, to kind of see the, the majority kind of gets it, but then there's all these people who, think of people in the entertainment industry as the you know million billion yeah. level stars that are getting oh but they get paid so much i don't think they yeah. understand no. any of it and how any of this works and what the threat of ai brings well uh, it's, to, not, it's not even that it's literally yeah i mean this is what lazarus is about <laughs> yeah. right this is what lazarus is about you you yeah. you you, you Labor is in this, you know, and this is why unions matter. Labor is being aggressively devalued to such an extent, right, that we now live in a gig economy, right, where where you are expected to make money, right, driving for a company with your own car. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? And and that's broken. That's broken, right? Lyft, Uber, they're not paying for repairs to your vehicle. Nope. Right? They're not doing that. But we have broken the economy now so much that your regular nine to five job is not enough. That you can't live on it. And I mean, I think, you know, I saw and I'm sure you saw all the stuff going on on social media about what has happened to residuals. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I haven't received residuals in a year. So apparently nobody's watched the old guard. (laughs) And we know that's not true. (laughs) I don't know, according to. According to Netflix. Well, it was always so dicey too the way they do their numbers. Yeah, because it's all internal. And well, and, we and they're and, 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 and those are hidden. Used to be like the Nielsen ratings or whatever. Exactly. Like we don't have that. That, that data is hidden, and I am yes. convinced. I really am convinced that's because they're so bad. Mm-hmm. 
Like, I think the streaming numbers are so much worse than even the most pessimistic assessment that they're they're terrified of these these numbers getting out to Wall Street, right? Because mm-hmm. then the investors are going to be like, well, what the hell? So it's, it, you know, they have created a horrible, horrible problem for themselves. And by they, I'm talking about these CEOs, this whole corporate culture that does not value um, mentoring, does not value education, and certainly has no value on labor. Right. That mm-hmm. that environment is a cutthroat environment. So, you know, when Iger says these people are being unreasonable, he thinks they really are. Right. His disconnect is such yeah, that he was- thinks it is unreasonable for an actor to be able to make a living wage on their work or to have control of their likeness and how it is used or to be paid for the use of that likeness. They think it is unreasonable for a writer to say, right, if I am going to do this work, I need need to be compensated throughout the process, right? Um, He's not... You know, the, there is a level of mustache twirling evil there. We've seen it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But Iger legitimately believes, oh, no, they're being unreasonable. It is unreasonable that they want to be able to survive uh, doing this job for us. Right. Doing this job that is making us billions upon billions of dollars. It is unreasonable that they should want even a microscopic percentage of the wealth of what they create. But in the same breath, right? He can say, but I am worth the hundreds of million dollars I'm going to get annually for saying that, right? Mm -hmm. Because I am providing, apparently he believes he's providing a worth, right? His worth is I'm cutting costs. I am returning the benefit to the shareholders. Well, the problem there chief is that you're going to end up with, you're going to end up selling nothing. Right. And they're so short sighted and they're so stupid about this. Literally. I mean, they're ripping stuff off of their platforms, right? Because they're getting a short term tax break on it now. Oh, that just saved me $6 million on the bottom line. That's great. Except now it's gone. It'll never iterate. It'll never bring in more people. Like we forget, like the last Writers Guild strike, everybody loves to talk about, oh, my God, you guys, can't. You, 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 Trump is your fault. One bullshit. The 2007-2008 Writers Guild strike did not create reality TV, guys. <laughs> but two, what it did do is give you Breaking Bad. Mm. Right. Like one of the best shows of the last 20 years is a direct result of the writer's guild strike. Oh, okay. You know, that show got its attention. It was allowed to survive because of that landscape. Mm. It, it's, it, it, yeah, I mean, it's, it, you know, it, it, this is, this used to be a union driven country. This used to be a labor driven country Um, and not to sound like, and and I love this because this, this is a Republican talking point or it used to be right. We used to make things. Well, we did and we don't. Mm -hmm. Right. And we now expect other people in foreign countries who work for pennies, who do not make a living wage, to make the things for us, right? Well, then you've got a class solely of consumers. And if you can't afford to consume, i.e. if you are not of a surf or higher class, you're waste, you're surplus to requirements. And literally that's what they're being about. I mean, UPS drivers are going to strike because they are dying doing their jobs. 
And they're dying doing their jobs, not because they got hit by a car, but because fucking UPS doesn't give them air conditioning. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, the, the, like, it's not Florida crazy. Florida is unbearable. Yeah, yeah, that's it's, evil. It's, there's, yeah, there's it's no, unbearable. The, there's no possible way right that if you have any sense of ethical moral humanity at all to another human being to say it is right and proper that your job require you look we all have to suffer in our work to an extent right we all got to do stuff we don't necessarily want to do there's a huge difference between that and being told by the governor of the state of texas you can't stop for water as the world is literally burning yeah or being told, no, you've got to drive your route in this amount of time in a vehicle we have supplied, right? Where you're going to die of heat stroke. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's not, it's one thing to say, you know what? I'm going to be a firefighter. And in so doing, I acknowledge I may one day die in a fire, right? That, 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 that was an agreement you made with yourself. Yes. Yes. When you took the job. Yeah. Nobody goes to work for UPS going, I will lay down my life for this. <laughs> I will lay down my life to make sure your three day express pack gets to you in time. <laughs> that is a fucked up economy. That's broken. Mm-hmm. Right. And if anybody can look me in the eye and with a straight face say, well, that's the price of doing business. Then there's a problem with the business. Never mind. What the hell is the matter with you? Like, wh- where's your, where's your connection to other human beings? Right. It's, it's, it, it is, it is when you think about it for too long, as clearly I have, it becomes sickening. Right. <laughs> Yeah, it becomes out. Yeah. It, it literally is outrageous in the sense of outrage. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, I think your kind of description of Iger and kind of where you were saying so out of touch, he believes these things. Like, because at first I was just, I, was, I mean, not that I'm disappointed, but it's like on one hand, I'm always like, ah, oh, the mouse here in Orlando rules everything. And then yeah. when the whole DeSantis stuff was happening, I'm like, oh my God, here we are cheering for the mouse because you're like, yeah, yes, like, yes. Okay. And then on the flip side, you're like, wait, now, no, right. what, what and, is and going both, on? Like, oh. And both can be true. This is one of the things, right. That we've Nuance, all fallen yes. into, right. We, yeah. We've, and and this is a product of of hissy fitler enormously and and all who rode with him what about ism is their favorite tactic oh don't don't look at us because you did this it's like we can acknowledge both things are wrong there is a sliding scale of vile right right like (laughs) we can go you know what slavery was a crime against god and man Mm -hmm. And it needs to be answered, and 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 we as a nation need to make right. That does not, therefore, mean that we cannot, oh, say, look at Saudi Arabia and say, maybe not executing people for disagreeing with the government or beating women in Iran for not covering their heads, right? That That doesn't take away our ability to talk about these things and to say, yeah, I can recognize where we need to be better. There's a huge difference between ignoring that and pointing and saying, no, no, both can be true. Yes. We know we have work to do here. We're working on it. That doesn't mean we get, we've got to sit here going, oh, okay, well, that's all right. You go on being vile. And once we're pure as the driven snow, and fresh and absolved of all sin, then we can speak. That's bullshit. I mean, that's, 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 that, it, that is such a false equivalency. And yet, it's a very effective one, especially amongst liberals. Because liberals, definitionally, at least in this day and age, are introspective, Right? Where there's there's a constant self interrogation and a constant attempt to acknowledge 
bad acts and mistakes. But the but that turning into a paralysis to speak out against anything else. I mean, literally, it, it literally is like, well, I don't feel I should say anything until after what they what, once they show up with the guns and are shooting me, then I can speak out. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's, it's, I, it's horseshit. I just yeah, it drives me been, crazy. It's been a lot of the all or nothing. It's been a lot of the nuance and not understanding two things can be true at the same time. And, uh, you know, being in this whole advocacy whirlwind that I've been in has been super eye opening because I thought this whole time, okay, I'm going to have to battle the Republicans like tooth and nail, which I did. Don't get me wrong. Sure. Uh, but then the biggest backlash and issues I had was from my own AAPI yeah, exactly. you know, allies, quote unquote, that they just, and, and so much of it was, I just want to say this and make a like, I don't know if, if this is a thing in your industry or whatever, but like, I guess all these orgs and nonprofits, the big thing is making statements. It's like, we're putting out a statement, oh, you no. know, and it's in like a quote and like a letter and we're going to email that statement to everyone. I'm like, yeah, instead of wasting my time with all of these things that are just to, for show, I just want to go actually do the work. Do. Right? Okay. Like, I have and, work to do. And, and that is in, this is again not to um not to not to name names. There are a lot of people I know in the comics industry in particular who are wonderfully performative. Performative, yeah. Right? They uh, make sure they are seen seen saying all the right things mm -hmm. and then doing as little as possible. And I have seen a lot of people. Um, way too many people who believe what they say and not what they do. Mm. Yeah. And talk, as we all know, is cheap. <laughs> right. It is yeah. easy as hell for me to put a post up and say, hey, let trans kids, kids live. It's a much different thing to be like, and in this time of inflation and financial uncertainty, I'm going to put $100 towards this, and I'm going to write these letters, and I'm going to get out there. Yeah. I'm going to put my feet on the ground. And so, you know, it's real easy to say I'm standing behind. And that's not to say that the money doesn't do anything. Yeah. And it's not to say that the voices don't matter. Right. But it is to say that... It's certainly signing a petition is, 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 is a valid step. If you can take it a step further and maybe write a physical letter and stamp, stamp, you know, put a stamp on it and send it to your Senator, one of them, that's more, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it, there is, you know, and it gets into the financials of it all as well. People yeah. want to be seen to be doing things. Yeah. People want to be seen to be doing things when they don't actually want anything done. <laughs> you see, Kevin, did, you, did you read that? I love this one. Kevin McCarthy apparently found like a 10, 15 year old, 20 year old study that had been done that said, basically, if you plant a trillion trees, mm. it'll it'll reverse climate change so he's okay. proposed it oh, he's proposed okay. it never mind the fact that the people who publish it were like yeah we're kind of wrong <laughs> and that won't like that won't do it or and i love this one to plant a trillion trees would require the uh the <laughs> would would effectively be covering all of the continental united states in trees <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a trillion trees. <laughs> I was gonna ask. I'm like, that sounds yeah. like a lot. <laughs> it, it is. It, it, it's it's a substantial. It is a substantial number of trees. Yeah. Um, oh I was my saw Bendis and Fraction last night, and I hadn't been oh. looking at the news, and they told me about uh, the latest stuff in Congress yesterday, and I was just like, oh my god, this is where we are now. 
Uh, I don't you know. know what they're referring oh, to. No. Oh, no. Uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene trying, oh. you know, introducing poster board sized naked pictures of Hunter Biden into the congressional record. Mm, okay. It's like, okay, you know, I think it, apparently uh, Ocasio Cortez's response is, oh, we're doing that. Should we bring the the girl who's accused, accused Matt Gates out here and uh, have yeah. her enter into the record? Right. Like, I mean, yeah. I know. Uh, this I is, know. This has it's turned so into a huge rant. This has turned into this nothing is, but the rant. The Rucka rant episode. Okay. You want to talk? You, you want to talk? Let's talk about happy things. Oh my goodness! Well, I was gonna say, you know, first you write Lazarus, and you start with this, this, uh, this virus that's like plaguing everybody. You know, the hawk flu, and uh, then we have COVID, and then now you have this perfect analogy of like the families and it's the- a documentary. <laughs> yes. So oh, you, you know. do realize you are writing the end still. And so, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, and I know how it ends. Yeah. Um, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So it's, it's, yeah, this is look, it's fascinating, will, but, but <laughs> I, I, I will say this. Um, this is my, did we, did we talk about Star Trek lower decks last time? No. Okay. <laughs> so I, I grew up, you know, uh, a, a Trek fan and, uh, and I can still remember seeing like the first episode of next generation when I was in college, like okay, me yeah. and eight other friends cramming into this guy's room, uh, up in the North tower of the main building on the Vassar campus. Cause he had a TV in his room uh-huh. and he had rabbit ears. And so we could all watch encounter at far point, uh, which also tells everybody how old I am. <laughs> and, you know, I fell off the truck wagon because the truck wagon was not doing terribly well. And then Paramount started, you know, CBS Paramount started putting out all this new stuff and I had no interest in it whatsoever Mm -hmm. because it had seemed to me that on a corporate level, what had been, what had happened was, and and look, and this is the what about ism, right? You can throw a lot of stones at Roddenberry, right? But that is a utopian vision of future. That is a positive vision of the future. And one of the things that was clearly coming down from the CBS Paramount of it all was not that, right? We want it to have gone wrong. That's more interesting. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you know, guys, you can still tell really interesting stories in a a world where it's gone right, Mm -hmm. right? Um, so I was not terribly engaged. And then Strange New Worlds came out, and I know we've yes, talked about that. We have. And I um, had heard a lot of people saying, you, should, you know, Lower Decks is actually really good. And I had been hyper suspicious of it because one, it's, you know, 24 minutes, it's half hour animated. Mm. And it immediately looked to me like it was going to be mean spirited. Right. It looked oh, like the okay. show was going to be like, we're making fun of the thing. Okay. And it absolutely isn't. It, it I mean, it, it is absolutely comedic, but it is done with, it's such a love letter to everything that Star Trek is. And as you go oh. deeper into it, it becomes even more and more of that. It becomes more and more of that embracing that strange new worlds has Mm -hmm. done of being like you know what this is a we can overcome these things we can be great we can do great things for each other and together um and man i love the hell out of that show (laughs) i'm so glad i am i i am stunned by how much i love that show Oh, I'm so, so glad. <laughs> and I say this as somebody who is like, I have no interest in Discovery. I really wasn't watching Picard. I don't want to know. <laughs> I, I have been burnt too many times. Right, right. And, it hurts and, and we've we've talked about I think, the fact that uh and you know, and I I'm 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 guilty of this. We have so many stories in the last 20, 30 years where it was just, you know what? Basically, the moral of the story is it's shit and it's always going to be shit. Sorry. You know, like the, writing dark is easy. 
Oh, really? Oh, yeah. It's okay. easiest thing in the world. It's low hanging fruit. Mm. This is why now I'm going to piss a lot of people off. This oh. is why I don't think it's particularly hard to write Batman. Okay. Okay. Right. Batman is grim and gritty. And, you know, everybody's take on Batman these days is born out of Frank Miller's Batman. Mm -hmm. And Frank Miller's Batman is probably best described in the what Dark Knight Returns sequence of there's seven working defenses from this position. Three of them disarm with minimal contact. Three of them kill. The other one crack hurts. Right. And it's like, <laughs> oh, so. So Batman's a psychotic sadist. Is that what he is? But Batman's stories are built in the main around a very dark world. Gotham is a failed city. Yeah. The police department is definitionally corrupt and ineffectual, right? It is a city bounded by madness, right? Mm. Batman is not difficult to write. That's a headspace just about any writer can get into. Superman's a nightmare. Mm. If you're doing Superman right, he doesn't look around and go, there are seven working defenses from this position. He doesn't look around and go, this is all crap, and I'm the chalky white you know, uh, medicine that will, will, will cure it. That's not Superman. Superman is the guy who goes like, why are you being an asshole? Right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's, he, he's, he, 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 he smiles. Awesome. Well, yeah. and he smiles <laughs> yes. and he believes, right? He's, he's, he, he is definitionally a noble aspirational figure because he believes in the best of people and he wants people to achieve that. Mm -hmm. Right. Much harder to write compelling stories for a guy whose immediate solution is not, I'm going to break his arm, right? Mm -hmm. Especially then when you add on the power set, which is how do you hurt him? Kryptonite, pretty much kryptonite, and also break his heart, right? Those are the things. Yeah. Hard to do good soup. Um, it is hard to write stories with realistic and happy endings and that's because and i know people listening will go well your problem right there is that happy endings aren't realistic so yes they are we have happy endings every day of our lives we just don't stop there right we keep right. going right you, you know well, well we're ahead everyone <laughs> you know what I mean, but I know it, I think it's you the get, acknowledgement you, of gratitude for the moment yeah, and, and like having that exactly as a bookend it. and then okay, you finish a chapter. hard day. You, you know, you can see a friend, you can watch a thing or read a thing or hear a song that brings you joy. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that's, that's, that's a fine ending to a chapter, right? That's a fine ending of the chapter. It doesn't say everything is solved, mm -hmm. but everything is never going to be solved. I mean, you know, we, we live, we live a continuity. We don't, we don't live a terminus. We're part of this thing. Part of the problem we've got with climate change right now is an attitude that says we're it. No, we're not. No, we're not. But if, if you're willing to say, you know, I don't care about anything outside of me or after me, well, then you're really not motivated to solve the problem. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you genuinely don't care what the place is going to look like in 100 years, yeah. Well, why should you change anything today? Eat that extra burger, you know, crank up the air conditioning, you know, or lower it, I guess. Use all the energy you want. Throw the trash wherever you want. It's not going to matter. Okay. I mean, I disagree. I don't think that's much of a way to live. <laughs> I don't think that's yeah. why we are here. You know, if there is a meaning to life, it isn't, you know, I'm in it for me alone. Mm -hmm. I've been watching, I'm, I'm working on a thing, and I watched... Um, 
I love I love uh, magic. I love sleight of hand. And uh, I was watching. There's a master class by Penn and Teller. Okay. And uh, so I watched all of it. Um, and once again, confirmed to myself that I will never, ever be able to do any of this. <laughs> but the thing I love most about it is that these lessons are broken up with Penn and, and and Teller talking about certain topics in magic. Okay. And there is a, a conversation about deception. And one of the things Penn says, and I found this really compelling because I thought it was the first time I had ever heard it like articulated this way. He talks about how difficult it is to look somebody in the eye and lie to them. Hmm. Like we are not made to do that. Right. That's a violation of our social contract. Like that's not how we survive as a tribe, as individuals. This yeah. is why liar, when, when people are lying, they tend to look away and so on, right? Because it is an unnatural act to look somebody in the eye and to tell them a falsehood. Mm -hmm. not, to, not just to misdirect them, but to outright lie to them, right? And I found that really interesting. Right. It was like that makes hmm. sense in a way I never thought of it before. Yeah. That that. And, I, and I'm a very good liar. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm a professional liar. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I find it. Very interesting. Hmm. Very compelling stuff. So. Yeah. Oscar loves magic and sleight of hand also. Yeah. Whenever we're on all the ships and stuff and there's the magician, he's like, we have to go see the magician. <laughs> I'm with him. Like, I love magic. <laughs> I, I, I'm i with him. I'm not as, I'm not as into the big illusion. Yeah. It's usually like the, the slight but, of hand. So fast. It's just. Yeah. The skill stuff. Amazing. Um, blows me away. Yeah. Any skill stuff that takes where, you know, that discipline took. Thousands and thousands yeah. of reps. Uh, uh, hmm. Hmm. Sifu. <laughs> I wonder, I wonder what of which you may be speaking. Hmm. <laughs> We're always hmm. like, Oh, amazing. That's hard work. <laughs> that's Kung Fu right there. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. That's exactly it. It's it's hundred percent. It's discipline and dedication and yeah. And it's 10,000 hours. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I know it feels like it's just endless hours at this point, but uh, more than I think it's even more than 10,000 in so many ways. But it's oh, funny yeah. when people come in and you know, they ask about Kung Fu and all of that. And it's just like, yeah, well, it's a lifelong journey. So how much do you want to learn? It's yeah. up to you. It's such an interesting mentality <laughs> in this, this country for people yeah. to grasp that they don't get a certificate and then they're finished. Like it's, not it's a done. very difficult thing. Yeah. It's a difficult thing. So, but I usually analogize it to things like art and creativity and, you and know, life music and life. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I know. I know. No, it's, it's, I, I think I've said this before. It's, you know, you want to learn how to write. Um, you're never going to know everything there is there's there's no moment where it's going to be you now know if, if you want <laughs> if you want a complete you want to be able to say you completely mastered something become a cpa right because <laughs> no because because it's a codified yes thing yes. right it's like yeah. here is the tax law for 2023 you can learn that right it's all there right you can master that Mm -hmm. And you will be able to answer all the questions related to it. And I say that I'm, I'm probably wrong because I'm not a CPA and I'm sure a CPA would be like, actually, but, but you see what but I'm you, saying? There's a standard. There's a very well, specific. Yeah, standard. And there are places it's, where you can be like, I know how to do all these things. Yes, I can do yes. all of it. Yes. It's very and, technical. Yeah. And yeah. Okay. If that's what you need in your life, I get it. I really do get it. Um, the and and the willing the the embrace of um, of ongoing learning is also the embrace of ongoing failure. Mm -hmm. Oh, right. Yes, hundred percent. And and that's really scary for people. And and understandably so. 
Understandably right? so. I, I, it's I difficult. don't. Yeah. We, no, nobody. Nobody really, I think, ever gets to a point where they're like, yes, I really like screwing up. <laughs> right. Yeah. Failure is fun. It said takes, no one ever. <laughs> well, but it takes a choice. Right. Well, and this is why we have school well, it's a mindset and so too. on. Right. Yeah. And, and this mindset. is why. It, but this is also why you teach where you do. Right. You are mm-hmm. providing an environment Right. Where failure is 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 welcomed. Yes. And is yes. rewarded. Right. Yes. You can fail safely here. Yeah. Because in yeah. failing here, it is safe. It's not punitive. And through that, you can learn. Right. Mm-hmm. Nobody really wants to be like, well, you know, I failed learning how to fly. Right. There's there's a reason that they don't actually let you go into the plane until right. you have reached a certain level of mastery. Yes. You have some proficiency yeah. there. <laughs> exactly. The, you know, it's the same thing in a car. Right. Yeah. We don't put you on the street until you've mastered the parking lot. Mm. You know? Not going to open a new rant, but I'm like, this is where I also feel like people should have mastery of a weapon firearm. I absolutely agree. Or they should should be be allowed to handle one. A basic licensing right there. Simple. (laughs) Used to be something the NRA did, right? That was what the NRA was for. Yeah. They provided a safety. Yeah. It was like, this is how you learn to use your firearms. This is how you use them safely. Yeah. Now, we're here to make sure people buy as many guns as possible because we're getting a lot of money from the gun manufacturers. <laughs> my, my student who has a school in Germany, he comes every summer and one summer when he was here, he was telling me this time and, Oh, someone took me to this thing you guys call the gun show. And he was like mortified. Like he just couldn't even believe yeah. what was available to consumers and how different things are in other places <laughs> it's yeah. like welcome to florida america it's, it's <laughs> terrifying when you think about it yeah it's terrifying so all right i'm not gonna get us down that rabbit hole because that's a whole no. other rant but <laughs> um but essentially i think we 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 ended up we kind of we, 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 we went all over the place this little, time we were a little up a little ended a little bit on a higher note so as <laughs> always mr rucka as my friend pete would say <laughs> <laughs> it's a pleasure. <laughs> it is always a delight, Mimi. Um, I'm excited for you coming out here. I'm looking Me forward too. to seeing Oscar as well. Yes, and yes, yes. um, and and yeah, we're gonna have to uh, we'll have to we'll have to come up with something for the for the for Greg and Mimi show live. We'll yeah, yeah, costumes yeah. or fireworks. Yeah. Oh, or, okay, yes, hundred percent. You know us. We're so yeah. we're we're big on drama. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta like give away something. I don't know. We gotta okay. come up with something. We're gonna brainstorm this. So Alrighty. until next time. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully very soon. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for listening to the Sifu Mimi Chan show. Please subscribe and rate my podcast on your platform of choice and leave a review. You can become a patron of the show at patreon.com slash Mimi Chan to help keep this podcast going. Follow me and interact on social media at Sifu Mimi Chan on Instagram, Twitter, or Facebook.